Hello everybody, welcome back to Edge Sports Network. Nick here, hope you guys are doing good. We got another interview for you guys today, part of our summer series. We got Cameron Roberson of UMass, running back and wide receiver there. Cameron, thanks so much for joining us on the site. Hey, thank you for having me. Great to have you on, looking forward to this interview. We're based out of Massachusetts, so it's always great to have some local guys on. Um, I know a lot of our viewers are from the area, so I'm sure they're looking forward to this interview right here. But you yourself, I mean, you're from California. I know you went to JUCO a couple of years in Cali before moving out here to Massachusetts. So for starters here, I mean, how was making that move, that transition over to the East Coast? Oh, it was a very big transition, especially mm-hmm. since my junior college was it's two minutes from my house. Oh, wow. And so, really, when you talk about it from a comfortable standpoint, I was very comfortable. I was in my house from high school and my first two years of college, and, and so I was living life. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, when, when I did get this UMass offer, I really had to, you know, really just get out of my comfort zone, you know, and enter a realm that I wasn't used to. Mm-hmm. And so, and that, that's being, that being the East Coast, like, the furthest I've ever traveled is, you know, Arizona, mm-hmm. you know, Las Vegas, Nevada, like that. Those are the first two places I've ever traveled. And I think a big reason I chose UMass is the coaches made it so easy for me to transition mm-hmm. and they made it, they made me very comfortable in my transition. So, uh, I would say that's the reason why I chose UMass mm-hmm. and UMass has been great. You know, uh, one thing that I do love about UMass is the weather and the scenery over there. Yep. Uh, you get all four seasons and they told me that on, on my on my visit and and if anyone knows bakersfield california you know there's only two Mm -hmm. it's hot and cold (laughs) um yeah i mean that's one big sell i think that every massachusetts school has is you get all four seasons you get to see the leaves change on the trees um i know a lot of people like that and i know before we went on here you said you had some interesting travel stories in the in the plane here so i mean let, let let's dive into a few of these I'm definitely curious to hear them. I've had a few interesting travel stories myself, but I mean, you you got the longer flight than me, so let, let's hear what you got. Well, you know, with connectors, it can always be scary. Yeah. You know, because if something goes wrong on that first flight, you never know what's going to happen. Yep. You know, as far as the connector goes. And so I, I would say that this, the craziest one that's happened to me thus far is I was coming home, I believe, for Christmas break. Mm hmm or something of that nature and our flight you know luckily you know luckily i got to my connector mm-hmm. which was in chicago mm-hmm. i'm in chicago and it's supposed to be an hour you know connector so so i'm sitting there i get an update on my phone you know my flight gets delayed mm-hmm. an hour i'm like okay that's not a big deal i gives me time to get something to eat okay i go get something to eat come back okay your flight was delayed and then two hours i was like oh man that sucks <laughs> You know, it's all good, whatever. And then, so that puts us about, you know, 11, 12 o'clock. And mm-hmm. then all of a sudden it says, your flight gets, del- my flight got delayed until the next morning. Oh. And that's when I was like, okay, now, now I'm kind of stuck. You know, now yeah. I'm kind of, I, I didn't know what to do. And I was sitting outside my gate. And what really made it funny is a group of people arguing with, you know, the people that were running the show. Mm-hmm. You know, that that always makes it interesting, just watching a bunch of random people yell at, you know, two people working. And oh, yeah. My heart went out to them because they, they had no control over exactly. you know, what, what went on. And so I ended up falling asleep for a little while, and I woke up to my phone vibrating. It was 3.30 in the morning. It said, your flight is uh, leaving in 10 minutes. And so they had switched it in the middle of oh, the night. Oh, my God. You had people. So the security gates weren't even open, and you had people – hopping gates, you know, doing whatever they can to get in, you know, going through security and running. And it, it was a mess, but, you know, it, it made for a very interesting story. I've never had anything like that happen to me. I would have been, I would have been nervous, I think. I mean, I've had layovers. Very nervous. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. I, I don't know what I would have done. I've had layovers in Chicago before. Um, and that's no small airport either. I mean, I've had times where I've yeah. got to the terminal and then my next gate for the next flight is like a 25 minute walk. So were the gates at least close where they changed it to? So my gate, yeah, my gate was about a five minute walk. It wasn't, you know, okay. it wasn't anything big. And then when they had switched it, it was at the same gate. They just switched the time. And what I felt bad was because they were handing out vouch- 
vouchers for people to stay at hotels and everything. Mm-hmm. And people had left, and the security gates weren't open. And so for them oh. to come back, you know, so it, it was a mess, and I felt bad. But, you know, I, I really just felt bad for my mom. You yeah. Know, well, I was calling back and forth because she had to drive to L.A. to come get me. And that's about a two-hour drive. And so I was calling her, letting her know what was going on. And poor soul, she was tired out of her mind. So, oh. I mean. Man, that is that yeah, that is a crazy story right there. I'm not gonna, I and I've luckily I haven't had anything like that. I haven't had anything that bad right there, but that is the kind of stuff that happens when you're flying, especially you know when you got those connecting flights. Um, I know I've had like two connectors a couple times, which was just terrible. And then um, of course around Christmas time too, the thing you got to worry about coming from Massachusetts is the weather. I mean that's one thing. Right. Um, that I am always worried about flying back in. And then Chicago, I mean, the weather's not too great there either, but I'm glad you at least got home. I mean, that's the big thing, so. And I was home for a month, so I mean, I wasn't really worried about it. Mm -hmm. It was just, it made for an interesting story. Hey, I mean, you got through it, so now you got the story at least. Um, But, I mean, yeah, going back to your career now here, I mean, that was a good story, though. I'll, I'll give it to you. I think you've won the best airplane story that we've had on the site so far. Of course, you know, so far it's the only one, so you didn't have to beat anyone out. But I think that one's going to hold hold this top dog for a while right there. But um, back in high school, I know you also, I mean, ran track as well. So how's that background background kind of help you out translate to the football field? I'm sure it has as a running back, wide receiver type guy. Um, so how has that really helped you in your career, both in JUCO and at UMass? It really helped with, you know, my top end speed and my leg strength. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, training for track is a lot different. And I wanted to run track at, at uh, Bakersfield College, mm-hmm. you know, I, but I after a long, like, long talks with my coaches, multiple of them, they said, you know, it's probably not the best idea because they wanted, they were so worried about putting weight on me and muscle mm-hmm. that they're worried that track would contrast it. And they were right because in, in high school, that's exactly what happens is, you're, when you're practicing, you're you're always burning calories, always burning mm-hmm. calories, always running, always sweating, and so you know you thin out. But I, my leg strength got really strong, and my top end speed is what really uh, improved from running track. So mm-hmm. you know I, I I thank track for for a lot of my speed. Yeah, I mean I think track definitely helped you at Bakersfield College. You had two thousand two hundred eighty two all purpose yards. You were really doing it all. I mean. Kick returns, punt returns, receiving the ball, running the ball on the ground. So, I mean, you're kind of this utility guy. You can really do it all. There's not a ton of guys like that in the NFL, I mean, or just football in general. College, we see it a little bit more because there's some more, you know, positions are more fluid. But once you get to the NFL, I mean, the really only guy I can think of that's like that, you know, Ty Montgomery is the most prevalent one. I know there's a few other guys that mix in there. Um, doing the same thing but there's not many so when you were coming into college football I mean even in high school were you kind of set on one position or did you kind of always want to be this utility all-purpose guy so coming up I was a running back Mm -hmm. I prided myself on being a running back and so going into my freshman year of high school that's what I was a running back and Mm -hmm. safety of course you know I I played both ways and I did love defense Mm -hmm. and and so then I, I had switched to, you know, running back and safety, running back and safety. Now, those are my two positions going into my freshman year of high school. Mm-hmm. I had pretty good success, you know, playing my first year of high school football uh, as a running back and, and safety. And then my sophomore year was a lot of adjustment because we had a, a head coach who had plans to move me to slot. Mm-hmm. You know, the slot that was there was a senior and he was also the safety. So you want to talk about a perfect fit, you know, I play yeah. the same things he does, slide me in there, let me learn, you know, but we had a coaching change, you know, a lot of players ended up leaving, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of turmoil within the program started to happen, and so I I was at running back, and then mid-season, I had switched to receiver, and then, or slot receiver, and then I had started at quarterback a few games, so it, it was a bunch of different you know, things that had happened and we didn't do very well, you know, my sophomore year of high school. And then what, and then we had another coaching change moving to my junior year. We had, you know, AJ gas for junior and senior year mm-hmm. and he came from Servite. So he believed in, you know, you play one side and he put all his best, best athletes on, uh, 
defense. So mm-hmm. I was just mainly safety for for two years, mm-hmm. junior and senior year. So I know when you have that experience kind of in every position probably makes things a bit easier for you to come into the next level and stuff. And I know at JUCO, every guy is really fighting to get to the next level, fighting to get to a D1 program. So, I mean, what was the competition like once you got there? I mean, here you come in, this guy who can kind of, you know, do it all, good utility guy, but was it a little bit of a culture shock once you got to JUCO? Were you a little bit surprised? Because I know I've talked to guys before. JUCO is becoming something that I see more and more of, you know, kind of year in, year out here. More guys doing that to kind of, you know, raise their chances of getting into a D1 program. But how is the competition there? Because as I said, every guy is fighting for a spot on a roster. Every guy is fighting for an offer. So how was that experience for you? I had a great experience, you know, at mm-hmm. Nashville College, and I, I felt like the competition was really good there. Mm-hmm. And I I was going to Bakersfield College kind of nervous because after my senior year of high school, I had two D1 offers. Mm-hmm. They're SCS offers to Weber State and Montana State, and mm-hmm. they were both for defense. And in my heart, you know, where I was at with football was I wanted to play offense. I felt like that's where my loyalty lies. That's where my passion lies. That's where I'm best at is offense. Mm-hmm. And so – I walked away from those two offers that people looked at me like, like I was crazy, and rightfully so. You know, those are mm-hmm. two full, you know, full rides. So, yeah. um, I go to Vegas with college. You know, having not really played slot at in high school, I played a little bit, but not to the point at a college level or junior college level. And my receiver coach at the time, there's Vince Van Horn and mm-hmm. uh, and my coach Ballard and and Daryl Ballard, and, and they were very good. And they taught me everything I needed to know, and they transformed me into a slot. Mm -hmm. And so um, the competition was good. It was really good. You have people from, you know, different states coming. Mm -hmm. You have people all around Bakersfield all coming to one school. So, you know, we had a good time. Yeah, you certainly got prepared for Division I football. I mean, you looked really good here with UMass in this past season. 15 catches for 59 yards, but you were used on the ground quite a bit. 116 carries for 355 yards, a couple touchdowns. Um, I just want to ask you, coming into a new program, I know it can be tough for a lot of guys. I know it can be a little bit of a change, especially when you make you know, the move that you made California to Massachusetts, literally right across the entire country. I just want to ask, new program, new atmosphere, new state. How did you feel comfort-wise with the team in your first season here with UMass? As the season went along, I got more and more comfortable with, you know, everybody in the locker room, the coaches, you mm-hmm. know, playing. And the way our practices are in, I used to joke that we probably work the hardest in practice in the whole country. Like, wow. we are always running. We are uh-huh. always running. And that, for me, was the biggest adjustment, was mm-hmm. always on the move, always running, always, you know, but we have – such a tremendous staff when it comes to you know preparing us for practice you know uh, Mm -hmm. our strength and conditioning staff is you know top tier Mm -hmm. and and so you know as as everything went on as the season went on as the month as the months progressed i i got more and more comfortable with my schedule with Mm -hmm. how practice went how the games went how we traveled and i just got more and more comfortable yeah i mean umass the atmosphere there, really great. It's really great. I mean, I'm sure you know this. It's commonly referred to as Zoomass. And between, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> and between, you know, students, faculty, just everyone on campus, you got around, you know, we'll say 30,000 people, give or take. And then you got, I mean, UMass is really the entertainment capital of Amherst, pretty much, and pretty much Western Massachusetts as a whole. So, I mean, what's the atmosphere like on game days? How is it playing at McGurk? I know everyone gets real riled up. The school is just crazy in general. So, what's it been like just going out there on game days, playing in front of that many people, and just seeing, you know, the tailgates, the atmosphere, you know, people playing cornhole out in the parking lot, just everything going on there. What's the UMass experience like on game day? It's awesome, and honestly, that's one of my favorite things. You know, when we walk off our bus and Mm -hmm. do – you know, uh, into our locker room, everybody's, you know, gathered around, you know, clapping us in and everything. Mm-hmm. And when I, when I watch people tailgate, you know, doing all these different things, it, it kind of like 
brings me back to home because mm-hmm. in Bakersfield College we did the same thing, you know, especially me being so close, my family, I would have, you know, twenty plus people there, family and friends all gathered around, you know, doing the same things, barbecuing, tailgating, doing all this different stuff before they go in the game and after the game. So mm-hmm. you know, I was that brings me back and I love seeing that. I love the support that, you know, we're given each and every week, regardless on how we do. You mm-hmm. know, they're still out there, you know, cheering their butts off. So I have nothing but, you know, love for the whole UMass community. It's a great it's a great community and I have a lot of friends that go to UMass. On game days, I can tell you this, I cannot go on any form of social media. I feel like I go to the school if I go on Instagram or anything. It's just everyone posting at the tailgate, everyone posting at the game. Um, But, yeah, just a great atmosphere there. And I know UMass, I mean, they certainly know how to get excited, how to get pumped up. Sports there are a big part of the culture, as is so many other things. And, I mean, coming up this year, I think fans are really going to like these games. You guys got some tough games on the schedule. You got Auburn, FIU, you got Army. When you guys play teams like this, I mean, how do you go into these games? What do you kind of look at? I mean, these games are certainly challenges on the schedule. There's no doubt about it. Do you kind of welcome that challenge right there and kind of use it as a test for your game? You kind of go in and say, listen, I mean, these games are big, but what do you kind of do to welcome these games as opportunities to prove yourself? Yeah, we welcome these games with open arms, you know, mm-hmm. and we don't really look we don't look at them as upsets because we expect to win each and every week, mm-hmm. regardless of how we're doing in the season, regardless on who we're playing. We're going into each and every game the same with the mentality to win. Mm-hmm. And if you're not, then you have the wrong mentality, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, really, we prepare the same. You know, we we break down their weaknesses. We break down what they do. We you know we we set what we're going to call the plays that we're going to call against, uh, you know, certain schemes they do. Mm-hmm. And all all we can do is just, you know, execute. And that's one thing that we struggled with last year is we didn't execute as well. The mm-hmm. game plan was there. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't put any of the losses on the coaches. They prepared mm-hmm. us to a T on, on what the other team was going to do. Mm-hmm. And I knew what the other team was going to do. A lot of us did. And it's just we didn't execute well. And so – it really comes down just to execution, really. You talk about that execution. It's your senior season here, so I'm sure, you know, you kind of want to go out and execute execute this year along with the team. I mean, what are some goals that you have for yourself and for this team? As we just talked about here, got some good teams on the schedule. You guys mentioned the coaches have you guys ready, so if you guys can just execute this year, you'll definitely see some more success for sure. So what are some goals you kind of have for this team for yourself, what are you looking at for your senior season? The ultimate goal is to make a bowl game. Mm-hmm. You know, I think UMass deserves that. I think, you know, our coaching staff deserves that. Everything they've been through with this pandemic and mm-hmm. you know, everything going on, you know, it seems like, you know, the world's hitting them with all these different controversies. But, mm-hmm. you know what, I think a bowl game is the ultimate goal for this team. And, and uh, as long as we're showing improvement, you know, mm-hmm. I, I can personally say from being here last year in the winter to this year, our, our improvement in strength, speed, you know, mm-hmm. the attitude in general, the culture is changing. And that's all you can ask for, really. Mm-hmm. You guys, you know, you did have a tough year last year, as you mentioned. But really, I mean, the way you guys are looking at this season, I feel like, is that you can only really go up from here. And That's right. Exactly. I mean, you guys have the right attitude to do so. You mentioned you got the good coaching game plan in place. So you guys come out and execute. Could be a really good season. I want to finish up on three questions here. The first two, fun ones for you. Third one, you might have to think a little bit. Since you're this running back, wide receiver combination, the first two here. First one, if you could catch a pass from any quarterback, past or present, who would it be and why? Hmm. Past or present. Yeah. to catch a pass. Um... That's a great question. I'm going to go with pass, and I'm going to go with Troy Aikman. Oh, there we go. That's a good one. Man, so I'm everyone in UMass will tell you I'm a diehard Cowboy fan. You know, it, along mm-hmm. with going with UMass, you know, I, I had some struggles with the Cowboys this year. Yeah. Uh, and Tro- 
Roisman is the last quarterback, you know, and him and Romo, but Romo didn't really win anything, like, you know, so mm-hmm. I'll get into that. That's a whole nother side story. <laughs> but Aikman, he gave my dad a lot of happiness, you know, winning three championships. Mm-hmm. And so I just wanted to experience, you know, what a championship, you know, throw feels like for mm-hmm. my own team. That's a pretty good one. I haven't heard <clears throat> I haven't heard Troy Aikman yet. Oh, man, this cough, man, the alley, the pollen out here. I know you're back home in California, but the pollen out here in Massachusetts is unbelievable right now. You're, you're lucky you're home. I don't know if it's this bad out there, but this is really hot here. <clears throat> yeah, it's we haven't got we haven't we haven't got too hot yet, but um, it, it's coming. I know we've had a couple hot days, but the humidity has been pretty bad. I will say that humidity is, is was an adjustment as well. Oh yeah. It's it's disgusting. Like August, September, forget about it. Terrible, terrible. Um, so yeah, Troy Aikman, not one I've heard yet. So um, definitely unique. Most of the guys they'll say you know Brady, um, Mahomes is a popular one. Um, so I'm I'm liking how you're going away from the mainstream here. But um, Brady, that's all I hear in Mass. Oh I man, Brady. Brady. <laughs> I, I hope everyone in Mass. You know, I hope they're doing okay with him moving because that's all i would hear we're not that's all i would hear over there. the answer is we're not doing okay the answer is we are not doing okay it was that happened and then i'm telling you what i'm telling you what cam this has been the worst year ever already like as it is with everything that's happened from january to now boston sports we lost mookie Betts to la brady's gone thank you oh. i gotta tell you thank you oh great here we go i all right we are oh. very happy to have Mookie join <sighs> this championship caliber team. You know, we 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 have to win one. We've been there. We got upset in the what for wild card first round, whatever it was last. Uh huh. And we've lost like two years in a row to the Red Sox and the Astro. Astros cheated, so technically we should have, and we took them to seven. Exactly. So you guys should have won. Really have lost to the Astros, but I knew we were losing to the Red Sox. We need to win one. I don't, We're due. you know, you know, I would say I could agree with you here, but I just, I can't do it. I can't do it because the mentality out here is beat LA always. It really is. And I just it's always <laughs> with Celtics and I don't yep. get into that. No, oh, we die hard Boston. And everything, you know, there we go. Hey, I, yeah, we'll, we'll say that. We'll say that for another interview where we can, we can get into that later right there. But I mean, between Mookie gone, David Price gone. Uh, Brady gone, Gronkowski with the Bucks, Chris Sale, you know, he's got Tommy John, or he's getting Tommy John surgery. It has been the worst year in Boston sports ever, and I mean, I know we've been spoiled for however long now, but, yeah. oh man, anyway, there, there was me just getting into my feels right there. The second question I have for you, if you could juke out, stiff arm, give the works to any NFL defender, who would it be? Who would it be? Mm, I would have to say, if I had to juke out, you know, a defender, I would have to say Troy Palmolo. There you go. Two very good answers. Troy Palmolo, you know, he was a a staple, you know, at, at the safety. Him and Ed Reed were a staple mm-hmm. at the safety position growing up. I watched a lot of their film growing up, mm-hmm. even when I was playing. Kiwi. I was watching a lot of their film, and you know Tro- the way the way Troy Polamalu played at safety, like instincts wise, is like you can't teach that. No, and and he went to USC, and that's my that was my college growing up. So you know, there we go. I can't. So that yeah, yeah. I mean Polamalu. If I had to describe my my childhood watching football, like the defensive game. If you told me think of one guy, it'd definitely be Paul Amalu. The talent, the instincts, the hair. I mean, he just... The hair. The hair. You you cannot forget the hair. I mean, he was a face... Personally, I think he was like the face of defenses from like... I don't, I don't even know where the time went. What, 2000, like 10 to 2000? It was somewhere... I, man, the time is all a blur to me now, but I know it was like... I remember playing Madden... I remember playing Madden, and he'd he'd be the only guy I would use on defense. The only one. It was no one else. But for the serious question here now, one you might have to think about a little bit. If we look five 
five years down the road from today, June 4th, 2025, what is Cam Roberson doing? I mean, where is he? What would really be the perfect situation for you five years down the road here? Five years down the road, Cameron Roberson is preparing for NFL training camp with the Dallas Cowboys. That is the perfect situation. There we go. In my head right now. I mean, hey, you you nailed that. You have thought about that before. I can I can tell you I've that. Thought of, I've been thinking about that since, you know, I was a, a kid in preschool. I've been thinking about what I was going to do in the future, and mm-hmm. that, I can't imagine doing anything else other than that. You're certainly on the right track for it. Um, I mean, I could I could see you and Zeke doing doing the uh, the double team back there, and you know, I mean, Dallas. I, I don't have anything against Dallas. Like I have I have stuff against LA, but I can totally root for you on Dallas. I'll I'll do that. I'd be glad to do that. Um, Man, you're the first person who's ever told me that. Really, life. really. Not a Cowboys fan. Everyone hates Cowboys. Everyone, I, you know. I think it's because of the label of America's team and mm-hmm. all this different stuff, but. You know, uh, we take a lot of hate as Cowboy fans, but I love it. See, I feel like I feel like we're in the same boat. I mean, Patriots fans, Cowboys fans, I feel like we can kind of relate. AFC and I mean, like we are the Cowboys of the AFC, I guess, if if I can put it. Yeah. So, I mean, I totally I feel like we should be allies here. You know, that's really how I feel. We do a lot more winning than we do. That's all. Uh, I just went a little more than we do. But it's yeah, like, a, li- a little bit, and I think it's going to start going a, a lot more downhill. So um, I, I'm i very scared for this year. So I think you guys are going to have us have us beat for probably like the next 20 years. So uh, we, we, we did our winning. Our time is – our time's probably up. I hate to say it, but um, I mean, Dallas, they got, the, they got a bright future, man, and they got a lot of talent. I mean – Offensively, I think they are one of the best teams in the NFL right now. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. So, but Cam Roberson, I mean, Cam, thank you so much for joining us here on the site today. Um, thank you for having me, man. It was an honor. It was great to have you on. The Mookie Betts slander could have done without it, man. But you know what? I'll give you the free pass. You play at UMass. Man. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we'll put your tw- – We'll put your Twitter down below so guys can follow your career, your senior season at UMass. Uh, when he's with Dallas, you guys will have followed him all the way through UMass to Dallas. So make sure you go give him the follow right now. Get the early jump on that. We'll also put a link to UMass's football page down below so you guys can follow the Minutemen this season. Great schedule they got, so make sure you check them out. Um, but guys, thanks so much for joining us again here on Ed Sports Network. It was great to have you guys. Hope you enjoyed the interview. Our longest one so far. A lot of content there. But hope you guys enjoyed. Take care, guys. Take it easy. And we'll see you guys next time.